Some star players in the NL Central are up for grabs, and the Toronto Blue Jays are all in on the sweepstakes. All that and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside Nick Goss. And Nick, you know, the season just ended, and it, it might be a little bit early for this, but always fun to see what the rumor mill is saying after a disappointing playoff exit. Yeah, it was yeah disappointing to say the least. And, you know, usually for most teams, uh, the trade mill doesn't start for at least another month or so. But for the Blue Jays, it's people are talking early. Uh, high expectations for the team fell really short. And I spoke in yesterday's video, uh, the solo one, with Shai Davidi, Blue Jays insider, reporter, made a report about the Pirates potentially being a great, you know, trade fit for the Blue Jays and being open to trading some of their players. And then today, I'll put the screenshot up here now, Brendan Weil, I guess, he's a uh, the scorer, like the MLB writer. He said, first trade column making it from Ross Atkins this winter is to old buddy Ben Sherrington of Pittsburgh. Start talks involving Moreno plus others going out for Bednar and Reynolds. Uh, Pittsburgh gets another young piece. Jays get switch hitting center fielder, back end K reliever under control. So I guess I'll digress to you. What do you think about, I guess, the report and the, the possibility of that there? Okay, those are great pieces to add to any ball club. And, and we were saying a little bit earlier off camera how every team has good players. Yeah. Whether that's two good players out of their 25 man roster or 10 good players, every team has got some intriguing pieces that could help another team make a deep run. And those guys that you mentioned, Brian Reynolds and David Bednar, Ooh. great players. David Bednar, great strikeout guy. Brian Reynolds, a switch hitting center fielder with a 850 plus OPS who has force of control left. You don't yeah. find that very often. Yeah, and Brian Reynolds, I feel like he's been on both of our radars for a while. I feel like he's been on the Jays' radar for a while. I've heard his name come up a few times. Obviously, the Pirates, they're still not close to contending yet. So, And they have a lack of catching depth. We'll get into that in a, in a few minutes. But yeah, um, I think you've mentioned Bednar before, um, off-camera or on-camera as well. So, you know, I'm sure this was music to your ears, but he is, yeah, he's an elite elite reliever. And a switch-hitting center, or switch hitting outfielder. There's not much uh, better we could do than him, given what we have, and given, of course, the uh, the Pirates' catching situation there. But it is uh, it's an intriguing, intriguing, I guess, group of players. Now they're gonna cost though. They're both of those players. They're gonna they're gonna cost some pieces. That's why I think uh, getting David Bednar should definitely be top priority for Ross Atkins and company. I think uh, getting Brian Reynolds would be a bit of a long shot. I, I'm sorry to break it to you, Jays fans, but uh, yeah, we're saying the Pirates are rebuilding, but how is that guy not a part of your rebuild? Yeah, He's, uh, he's in his mid-20s. He has four years of control left. He's been an all-star, been top 10 in MVP voting. I mean, that's got to be a guy that you build around, not look to yeah. ship away, although I'd love him. I'd love him in a Jays uniform. Yeah, I'd love him too. I guess the only, maybe if they think he's going to cost too much or something like that, I don't know what the Pirates, you know, the Pirates have done some some, some questionable things. So, you know, you never really know what the, what's up their sleeve. So, I mean, I, I'm hoping, hopefully Ross gets on the phone and definitely inquires about Bednar and um, specifically, you know, at least check the price on Brian Reynolds. But we do have a couple trade packages that, I mean, mainly you, uh, I'll throw one in there as well. Um, but I don't have a graphic for it, but I'll, I'll throw it in there as well. Uh, we're going to bring this out here. We have a little graphic here for a trade machine time. First time bringing it out on the, uh, on the year. Look to see it. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah we'll just start with the, with the first one you got. This was uh, this is from Peter. Here it is. So, I mean, feel free to break this one down. Um, yeah, it was yeah. your trade, so. All right, so I sent this to you a little bit earlier. It's uh, the Blue Jays. They get David Bednar, who... I'm very high on, as you all know that. And uh, the Pirates get Annie Jansen and uh, one of the top pitching prospects for the Blue Jays. I, I don't know his first name, but his last name is Yeah, I, for, I forget his first now, name as well. Yeah, but even though we are forgetting his first name, he is a great electric piece in that Blue Jays farm system. But you don't win with prospects at the major league level. You win with proven talent and David Bednar was an all-star this year, and, and he is a back-end-of-the-bullpen type guy. Yeah. I like this when you sent it to me. Um, pop it up one more time. 
Bednar is now they, they have like trade value measures here on the on the site. They have us winning the trade by like a decent bit. But I don't know if I mean 30 compared to 22. I don't know if Bednar is a bit, you know, gassed up on this trade thing, but I don't know. I mean, we're giving up Jansen who had a just had a phenomenal year. Um obviously I'm assuming under this we move Moreno up. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you can get Kirk uh, less time and catching more time. DH well, plus Moreno. Go ahead. I'll give you my reasoning yep. as to why uh, this is a good trade for both teams. Now, uh, David Bednar does have a lot of years of control yep. left. A, a back end, a a like top end reliever on a rebuilding team doesn't do you much good because yeah, okay, you'll have the lead going into the eighth inning, but you'll have it once out of every three games as opposed to two out of every three games. So I, I don't know if that's uh, that's exactly what the Pirates need right now. So that's addressing a need for the Toronto Blue Jays. And the Pirates, in return, getting Danny Jansen, who has two more years of control left before he hits free agency, as well as a pitching prospect that fits their timeline. And if you don't remember, the Pittsburgh Pirates picked Henry Davis first overall in this last year's draft, who is a catcher, who is a standout catcher and, and has a chance to be up there with the Adley Rutschmans of the world. Not quite on the same level, but you're buying time before Henry Davis is ready to hit the major leagues. So this is a win-win for both teams. Yeah, I mean, I like the deal from, from both sides. Um, I don't know if, I mean, it looks good, obviously, from both sides, but I don't know if Ross Atkins does this. Um, I feel like if he's given up Danny Jansen, he'd want to get not something bigger necessarily, but I feel like maybe a part of a bigger package. But that being said, elite reliever, they're not easy to come by. We've, I've talked about Gregory Soto in the past, and obviously I'm sure you like – Bednar is probably the better uh, trade piece. But either way, uh, I, I like it. Um, does it happen? I don't know. But this is – this, I can see this one being really realistic. I just don't know if I – mean, go ahead. It's more likely than, than a – Brian Reynolds trade. Oh, definitely, so that, yeah. This is we're getting the more realistic trade out of the way right here first, and and then we're going to work towards the Brian Reynolds cool. long shot trade. But uh, for me personally, I want to see Gabby Moreno uh, be up with the team full time next year and get a real opportunity to catch. Yeah, and so that's really the question here regarding all these trades is who the front office values out of the three to keep the most because one of them we presume almost surely is going to go whether that is Jansen Moreno or Kirk we don't know um I, I lean towards what I think they're going to do now I don't I'm just assuming I think they're going to trade Kirk for some like big pitching uh later uh but I don't know I'm I've just read a few things but I'm sure we'll have tons of videos about that we can we can debate back and forth but I don't know if it's it's really tough I don't know if it's get Gabby I don't know if it's Danny Jansen because I don't know the the value of those players necessarily or they do but um, I'm going to pop it up one last time for the final look here. I, I love it. We might have to throw in one other like minor prospect. I don't know. Um, mm. But yeah, I, uh, I love Bednar. And like we've discussed in previous videos, we need another stop reliever. And he has lots of years of control. So that seems like a win-win. It gives the, uh, like you said, the Pirates a stopgap. Or even a they keep Danny Jansen with the, uh, the other pros pros prospect they have. And they do, you know, just a platoon thing. But... You know, uh, I guess we move on to the next one, unless you have anything final to say on the Benner. I know you're a bit eager on the Kirk front. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I want to say about Kirk, you're not only trading Kirk, you're trading um, Alec Manoa, who is your ace, your ace yeah. for the next 10 plus years. You're trading his catcher. Right, so have, I agree. They have a, a personal relationship, and, and I don't know if you want to strain that to try to get pieces you you want to keep Kirk around because he's still 23 and he's not injury prone either I yeah I tend to agree um the only way that would happen is two things would have to happen Manoa would have to be fine with it and I think he's good enough to pitch to anyone besides Zach Collins yes but um <laughs> but you know Kirk the thing is Kirk could give you a lot more value back assuming so the only way they do that is a huge contingency is if obviously Manoa's fine with it and there's just like a huge, like perfect fit deal, but we'll we'll digress because we'll we'll be talking about that lots more. Uh, let's get into your your third trade here, or second trade, which is uh, Bednar and Reynolds for Beltre, Moreno, and uh, Zulu Letta again. Now you see the value over there. I I'm not exactly sure how they calculate that, but uh, Reynolds, as we mentioned, his value is very high 
because he's a switch hitter. He's a former all-star. Just a year ago, he had a bit of a down year this season, but he's still an elite defender in center field who hit 25-plus home runs. Doesn't come around often, and having him on this roster would just, I, I think, exactly what they need, a, a speedy, switch-hitting outfielder that, that hits for power. That, that just doesn't come around. But what the Jays are giving up here is a pool of prospects, including Gabriel Moreno, who's their top prospect, even though he has been in the major league level. Zulueta, yet again, who is one of the most uh, tantalizing pitching prospects for the Blue Jays. We're not giving up Tiedemann. Don't worry about that. Ricky okay. Tiedemann is our top pitching prospect. He's staying in Toronto. And uh, the last guy, you might not be familiar with him, it's Manuel Beltre. Yep. He's been killing it. Who the Blue Jays, yeah, the Blue Jays used their international signing bonus to get him from the Dominican Republic. He's born in 2004. He's an 18-year-old shortstop who has immense potential. Yeah, um, this one, this one's intriguing. It's more of a you know MLB the Show trade, but I I love it from the Jays side. I'll tell you right now. I think if the Jays, um, if the Pirates offer the Jays this, I think the Jays would take it in a heartbeat. Um, I just think um, depending how much you value Moreno, but you're getting like you're helping the team so much with those two players. The question is, would the Pirates ask for someone like Arelvis Martinez instead of Beltre, and then you value that, but. Yeah, that that is. We don't need to get into this trade too too much, but I would uh, I would love it. Obviously, I mean, I'd be that's a player I'd be fine giving up Moreno for a uh, elite bullpen arm and Brian Reynolds. But um, yeah, no, I, that was a good trade put together by you. I'll just quickly get into mine. It's just like it, it's around Kirk, and I haven't really. It just basically be Kirk and you know a couple prospects for uh, basically the same trade except replacing Kirk with uh, Moreno and assuming getting like another prospect back from the Pirates, but. I don't know if you have any thoughts mm -hmm. on that. You already had your thoughts on the Kirk thing, but if yeah, they, uh... I, I mean, I, I just personally wouldn't uh, wouldn't look to trade Alejandro Kirk right now because he's maybe you sell high on him, uh, maybe you bank on him not having as good of a season next year, but at the same time, how much do the Pirates value a catcher right now? Because their top prospect, or or one of them, we should say, their first overall pick, Henry Davis. That's their catcher of the future. Yeah. So do you um, really want a? Obviously, you want a Gabriel Moreno on your team, but shouldn't you want to address another need in the pipeline instead of getting another top prospect catcher? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a good point. I mean, they're doing it. If they get Moreno, I guess Moreno could play other positions as well. But Moreno's a bit of a different story. He's like a top what four prospect in the MLB. Some people have him two or whatever. But yeah, we'll get into uh, lots of like other potential moves in future videos as well. Um, but yeah, Kirk, I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling, I don't know, one of the three are going to go, and I don't know which one it is. And I could see it being Kirk. I really could. But I think it would be more to a team. It would be for straight, like straight pitching is would be my guess. But I digress. We'll get into that in, uh, in another video there. Yeah, definitely you said it. You, you're spot on with that. One of the three need to go because you have a like overwhelming amount of depth at the catcher position and and you got to see what you can get for at least one of them if not even two yeah so I, yeah. It, it, look, but that, that might be a stretch it might be a bit of a reach and we're not sure about that but that's uh that's for certain you got to get rid of one of them just because they can help you in another area on your team yeah and we saw it in the playoffs i mean this past year moreno didn't play so if we could have traded for the next season one of those three and get someone who can actually impact the... Obviously, Moreno can, but he can't if he's blocked by Jansen and Kirk. So, I think that's going to wrap it up here. We're on the road to 1K, and I'll uh, let you let you take the intro out. But we're close. We're getting there. We hit 300, uh, I think, today, yesterday. Whatever it is, support's been wild. Oh, yeah. it's uh, It's been growing exponentially, and, and a lot of that's got to do with you, Nick. You've been putting in a lot of work when I've been busy, and I want to thank you for that, man. And I want to thank you all for making it this far. It's been awesome. It's been a great journey so far, and there's only more to come. Uh, I know we're still a ways away from trades and, and the off season, but it's fun to speculate. And, we're getting and there. there's a lot of reports out there because the Jays need to make a move. Yeah, it's uh, we're definitely getting there, and I'm looking forward to it. See you guys. Peace.